Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have a very interesting problem. We have a, an object, let's say a car with mass m, and we're applying a power to the car, a constant power. So, of course, that is really a force, but the force will depend on the fact that the power applied to this car needs to be constant, and what we're trying to determine is the position of the car as a function of time. Let's assume that the initial position, x sub naught, is equal to zero. So when time equals zero, distance equals zero. So how do we do that? Hmm. Well, let's start with the definition of power. Power, by definition, is equal to work divided by time, and work can be defined by force times distance over time, and of course, distance over time is equal to velocity, so power is equal to force times velocity. So we know that there's some force applied, and that force is probably a variable. So now the next thing we we'll want to do is replace force by what force is equal to in terms of mass times acceleration. We know that F is equal to mass times acceleration, which means that power being equal to force times velocity can now be written as power being equal to mass times acceleration times velocity. And then we can write acceleration as, a, as dv dt. So let's do that. So we write power is equal to the mass, because notice power and mass are both constants, because power is constant, mass is constant. So let's write a in terms of dv dt, because now we have v, dv, and v in the same equation and dt. So we can separate the variables and integrate both sides. So let's do that. So we have power over, well, we don't care where we put the power and the mass, uh, but eventually we'll need to find x, so let's go ahead and do that. So um, power divided by the mass times dt is equal to v dv. How's that? So we separate the variables, we integrate both sides, so now we can have velocity in terms of time, so when we integrate that, we can say that P over M times T is equal to V squared over 2 times, oh, that's the integral of that, plus the constant of integration, but let's assume that V initial equals 0. So if initial velocity equals 0, that means the constant of integration cancels out. All right. So now what we have here is, let's go ahead and write that. We have V squared is equal to 2 pt over m. So 2, uh, 2, because we bring the 2 across, to 2 pt over m. And now if we take the square root of both sides, we have v is equal to the square root of 2 pt over m. All right, so far so good. We don't want velocity, we want position, which means if we write v as dx dt, dx dt, and on the right side, since 2p and m are all constants, we could write this as the square root of 2p over m times t to the one-half power. And notice what we can do now. We can separate the variables again. So on the left side, we have dx. On the right side, we have the square root of 2p over m times t to the one-half power times dt. And now again, we can integrate both sides. So on the left side, we have x equals, on the right side, we have the square root of 2p over m times t to the 3 halves power divided by 3 over 2. Well, plus a constant of integration, but again, x will be 0 when t equals 0, so we don't have to worry about the constant of integration. And that means that we can say that x as a function of time is equal to 2 thirds times the square root of 2p over m, but now notice we have t to the 3 halves power, so the 1 half power we can bring it inside the, the, um, the radical, and then we have t cubed inside like this, and then we have the 2 and the 3, we can bring that inside as well, so when the 2 comes in that's 4, 4 times 2 is 8, and 3 when it goes in that becomes 9, so finally we can put everything underneath the radical. We can say that x as a function of time can be written as the square root of 4 times 2, which is 8, p times t cubed divided by 9 
times m. I think that's it. And this would be a good expression for the position as a function of time. All we need to do is plug in time. We know that p is a constant, m is a constant, and it'll tell us the position of the car starting at x equals 0 when time equals 0. And that is how it's done.